As technology and human innovation evolve, scientists and archaeologists discover more and more about the world around us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three interesting discoveries from around the world. Egyptian Pyramids Found by Infrared Satellite Images In 1798, Napoleon Bonaparte invaded Egypt and brought more than 150 scientists and scholars who fanned out across Egypt, mapping archaeological sites from Alexandria to Aswan. Not long ago, an American research team announced that it has succeeded in a high-tech follow-on to Bonaparte's grand survey. By analyzing high-resolution satellite imagery covering all of Egypt, researchers have reportedly discovered up to 17 lost pyramids, nearly 3,000 ancient settlements, and 1,000 tombs. The effort was led by archaeologist Sarah Parkak of the University of Alabama, Birmingham. In the wake of the finds, the Egyptian government agreed to work with Parkak and other American researchers to develop a nationwide satellite imagery project to monitor archaeological sites from space and protect them from looting and illegal house construction and other encroachments. We are going to be teaching young Egyptians how to look at the satellite data and analyze it so they can keep an eye on these sites, Parkak says. Parkak began her study searching for traces of ancient village walls buried underneath Egypt's fields and desert sands. Obtaining images from both NASA and QuickBird satellites, she combined and analyzed data from the visible imagery as well as the infrared and thermal parts of the light spectrum. Through trial and error, she discovered that the most informative images were taken during the relatively wet weeks of late winter. During this period, Buried mud brick walls absorbed more moisture than usual, producing a subtle chemical signature in the overlying soil that showed up in high-resolution infrared satellite images. The team found 17 buried pyramid-shaped structures, including one at Saqqara, famed for its numerous pyramids. To further test some of the most recent satellite finds, Parkak enlisted the help of a French archaeological team already digging at a 3,000-year-old site known as Tanis. The satellite data revealed a warren of mud brick walls, maze-like streets and large residences that may have housed the rich. The French team chose a structure from the images and excavated there. Beneath about 30 centimeters of sediment, they discovered mud brick walls. It's really incredible work, particularly the results for Tanis, says Peter Lacovara, an Egyptologist at the Michael C. Carlos Museum in Atlanta who is not a member of Parkak's team. You can see the entire city plan under the sands. The greatest payoff may become apparent in years to come, adds Lacavara, as the Egyptian government develops a space-based archaeological monitoring system founded on satellite data. This giant Noah's Ark replica is stranded in the UK because British authorities don't believe it's seaworthy. A giant replica of Noah's Ark has been trapped in Ipswich, England for nearly two years, the result of an international bureaucratic nightmare of biblical proportions. According to the Ipswich Star, Britain's Maritime and Coast Guard Agency impounded the Netherlands-based vessel in November 2019, less than a month after it arrived in the UK and have now deemed it unseaworthy. When it arrived in 2019, it purportedly lacked a load line and anti-fouling certificate, which verifies that it does not have any coating, paint or surface treatment that harms sea life below. Still, the ship, a museum that tells stories from the Bible with quirky sculptures, remained open to the public until the coronavirus pandemic shut it down in March 2020. It had previously sailed to several other European countries without incident. But now, British officials have cited further concerns about its safety, including issues with its fire equipment, life jackets and lifeboats, and refused to let it leave. The owner, Dutch television producer Ard Bates, has been fined over $65,000 so far, and the port is fining him $700 per day that the ship remains there. However, Peters argues that the ship, which is built on a barge, has no engine and must be towed wherever it goes, is a non-certified floating object and is not required to comply with international regulation. 
As Peters explains it, there was never any need to register the vessel in its home country of the Netherlands. It is, after all, not an actual ship. But the lack of registration has caused Peters problems in the UK, which is notably stricter with maritime regulations than the Netherlands. If the ship had been registered in the Netherlands, authorities could grant it a one-time exemption to sail home. But because it is unclassified in its home country, the UK has effectively deemed it a commercial vessel, forcing it to abide by its regulations. This stalemate has left British and Dutch authorities frustrated. Peters bought the vessel in 2010 for $3.7 million to create a talking point for people of all backgrounds. It is one of two replicas built by Dutch carpenter Johan Hybers in 1960. The process took him seven years, following biblical descriptions of the mythical ship exactly. The Dutch producer initially even carried actual animals on board but explained that they caused too many problems and replaced the live creatures with wooden figurines. As for structural integrity at sea, Peters confessed after that trip that the Ark can't handle waves taller than six feet. When asked if it could survive a flood like the one referenced in the Bible, Peters replied, sadly no, I don't like to use the word miracle, but it is a miracle that we got to Norway. Three point five billion year old Australian fossils are oldest ever found. In ancient fossilized rock formations called stromatolites, found in the Dresser Formation fossil site of the Pilbara region of Western Australia, researchers have finally detected traces of organic matter and described their feelings in a new study published by the journal Geology. This is an exciting discovery. For the first time, we're able to show the world that these stromatolites are definitive evidence for the earliest life on Earth. Geologist from the University of New South Wales and leading author of the new study, Raphael Baumgartner, said in a press release. In 2016, scientists claimed to have found 3.7 billion year old fossils in Greenland, which unseated the Pilbara fossils record. Later research determined that those Greenland fossils were plain old rocks, and the crown was returned to the Australian fossils. But although researchers were confident that the Pilbara fossils were the real deal, it had not actually been conclusively proven that they contained signs of life. They had the shape and structure of microbial stromatolites, but no evidence of organic matter to back it up. Baumgartner and his team went digging. They analysed previously drilled core samples from deep underground, below where the rocks could have been affected by weather. Researchers analysed the samples in thin slices using multiple techniques, including scanning electron microscopy and scanning transmission electron microscopy, energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy and Raman spectroscopy, nanoscale secondary ion mass spectrometry and stable carbon isotope analysis. The team's analysis revealed that the stromatolites are predominantly made up of a mineral called pyrite, riddled with nanoscopic pores and the pyrite includes nitrogen-bearing organic material, as well as strands and filaments of organic matter that closely resemble the remnants of biofilms formed by microbe colonies. The organic matter that we found preserved within pyrite of the stromatolites is exciting. We're looking at exceptionally preserved coherent filaments and strands that are typically remains of microbial biofilms, Baumgartner said. Previously, a different team of University of New South Wales researchers found evidence of 3.5 billion year old microbes in hot spring deposits in the Pilbara. Because those deposits are about the same age as the crust of Mars, it is thought that they could tell us how to find potential fossils on Mars, especially since there is evidence the red planet once had hot springs too. Indeed, NASA has been investigating the Pilbara region to try to pinpoint possible geological signatures that indicate the presence of stromatolites. There are so many extraordinary things on Earth to discover. As we stumble upon more and more interesting finds, how will these discoveries shape the future of humanity? Only time will tell. But what do you make of these strange but interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching 
and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.